this is how we are going to construct biodegradable waste, biodigesters. And there are three key types of biodigesters that we are going to construct. And the whole construction technique that we are going to use is what I'm going to share with you in this video. The most important type of biodigester that we are going to consider for most homeowners is a biodigester with a traditional soak away attached to it. It's the most successful type of biodigester you can construct for any house. It's the one that you can guarantee the long-term use of the digester. It's the type of biodigester that when you do it, you know the homeowner has not thrown their money away and they are going to get a return on their investment in terms of investing in the biodigester. The only problem is that because it comes with an added cost. So most homeowners and some of us, the biodigester constructors, are not willing to explain to the homeowner that if you do a biodigester, instead of me doing a so called pit and attaching it to the biodigester, after two, three years of continuous or excessive use, there's water in that so called pit that will overflow or will block the pathway for the shape pipe water to go because there's a lot of water that is coming and probably the ground is equally not that good. It's a new water log. So water from the ground might sit into the digester. And especially during the rainy season or the wet season, you might have a lot of water in the ground. So when you flush your human waste from the inside the house, it's not possible for the water to go away. That is the problem that usually we have with a so-called pit. But if the homeowner is willing to invest in a soak away, then obviously everybody's problem is solved. Let's say this problem that I've enumerated still comes up. It will go into a soak away. You have done the blob work. You have perforated, you have left some bases, some holes at the base. So let's say the water doesn't go. You have put a clean out, four inch clean out or five inch, I mean six inch clean out on top of the slab and it's buried. The, the soak away is hidden. So in a worst case scenario and the water is not sipping away, it's not going, you will just open it up and have that water pumped. A little excess water in the biodigester will immediately run back do the soak away and then that can all go. If your biodigester needs that piece of white work, the biodigester does not actually need any water in it, then it works well for you. So any issue in open the soak away, you do your job and everybody is gone. Any issue in open your soak away, you take the water out, the biodigester is back to its use. The only time you go to the biodigester itself is when it's time for the routine maintenance which in that case, you are estimating the longer use because then there's no water in it. It's only the human waste. And you can guarantee that with only human waste in the biodigester is going to work to perfection. Biodigester plus soak away is your best bet in 2023 if you want to construct a biodigester for any homeowner. Another construction of biodigester, biodigester you consider a large family size biodigester for all five or six toilets in the house and then putting it in a soak away. The reason why most people prefer you construct two separate biodigesters is because they are not sure whether the digester is going to work. And people have done it and they said they have having problems with one biodigester. So they are going to rely on the other biodigester until servicing is done on this one. So people prefer to have two separate biodigesters because if one gets a fault, then they can use the other one until it's maintained or the works and done on the faulty one. But what I know from experience is that if you do construct a large biodigester, even for a four bedroom house or a three bedroom house, and all is connected to a soak away, as I've explained in the previous point, the soak away becomes your added advantage for you. So any issue, the soak away that we go to, any issue, the soak away that we go to. And most of the problems that we have with biodigesters is the problem with the wastewater not going away from the digester bed and then rendering the biodigester bed ineffective for the biodegradation to take place. So if you have a soak away attached to biodigester, the pipes can run around the house and they can come and fall at even 1.5 meter and it will still work well because the depth of the soak away pit will be determined by the depth of the digester. So if the digester is about two feet or one meter depth, you are looking at a soak away about two meter or six feet or five feet. Give me you know room for the shape pipe to come and then about two feet difference for the wastewater to sip onto the head surface. And if the wastewater does not sip, another advantage of having it scooped out or pumped out is also there for you. So in any case, in any situation, the soak away, the traditional soak away is key for the biodigester construction in 2023. And the third most important and significant biodigester construction that you have to consider for this year is that 
you construct a bio digester and then you connect it to a data or a drainage system. It's always been one of the best bets. It's always been how most of these government bio digesters have been done for the local communities because the waste water is filtered, it can equally go into a drainage system. The drainage system that the kitchen, grey water, and then the bathroom water and the laundry water are all going. The same water from the toilet can also go there. Because when you do a soak away, the water, there's no raw sewage allowed to go into the data, which is what is against the EPA regulations. If the water is filtered, it can be dumped in a gutter or a drainage system. If somebody doubts you, you just get a, a vortic bottle, you fetch this water from a digester, you go to the water research institute at 37, you have it tested, and then you can check the equal level whether it meets the standard for which EPA wants you to drop any waste water in a gutter. If it doesn't meet it, that means that a further enhanced filtration will have to be done in the biodigester so that the water will meet the required standard for which it can be allowed in a gutter or in a drainage system. So that's also key for you. All the reasons behind this mindset and this technology is that you do not want water rendering the biodigester ineffective. To make sure that your water goes is there. But in all this understanding, you also get it that if you are doing biodigester for a, a house and there's less users of the vicinity, it's a security post, it's a boys' quarters, it's a guest toilet. In all these situations, there's not going to be enough water that will render the biodigester ineffective. So in that case, a so-called pit, a drain flow system, a French drain will all work fine to your advantage. The only problem is the users in the particular facility and the amount of people who are using that facility and then the pressure that it brings on the biodigester and the wastewater that must get a place to go is always what you are looking to solve. That's why when you're constructing biodigester, the wastewater and where it's going, or the black water and where it's going is key for that needed peace of mind when it comes to biodigester construction. The next video show me on this channel is going to explain to you in depth I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step understanding of how biodigesters work and how you can use it as an option in managing your human waste.